The horrifying attacks by Hamas against Israel featured the indiscriminate slaughter of babies. Your Bible has a lot to say about babies being slaughtered in the next world war. Understand this sobering warning next on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. What is happening in Jerusalem and the cities of Judah? Certainly the most shocking event to me, anyhow, has been the beheading of 40 Jewish babies. And uh, what, what must God think about this? What does He say about it? And He has a lot to say about it. So we should be concerned about what God thinks on something like this. And certainly this is not about any political view, but this is about a biblical view. What does God say about this? We don't hear much of that. What, what is it that we need to understand? I'll tell you, there are numerous Bible verses that talk to you about this subject, and God even goes so far as to punish people very severely for this kind of act and this kind of vile problem that uh, should not be done by any political party or anybody else. It's certainly not something that I'm talking about politically. But I know from Bible prophecy that it's going to get worse and worse, and you can look it into the uh, prophecies of the Bible and, and see that clearly. And God says uh, the, uh, He will protect His people if they're obedient, but 95% of God's own people were prophesied to go into the Great Tribulation and lose their babies. Can you believe that? Now, 5% of the people are going to be loyal to God, and they are going to have their babies protected in the Great Tribulation. Something we need to understand, and God says He'd like to see everybody have their babies protected, but they have to do something. They have to heed His warning. God wants this to stop and stop forever, and He's about to stop it forever. But there's still a great tribulation ahead of us. There are uh, just numerous prophecies in your Bible that talk about this very subject. Notice Psalm 137, verse 8. Here we have those lukewarm people of God's church, and notice what happened to them. They rebelled against God, and he says, O daughter of Babylon, not Babylon anciently, but the daughter of Babylon, the modern day Babylon today. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy shall be he that rewards you as you have served us. In other words, these people are now telling these people of the daughter of Babylon, the Holy Roman Empire, that uh, they're going to be destroyed because of what they have done. And so uh, they're uh, being quite a witness to these people at that time because they are repenting. Fifty percent of the, those lukewarm people will repent in the tribulation and will enter into the kingdom of God. But notice verse 9. Here, here is a, another verse that we really need to take note of. Verse 9, Happy shall he be that takes and dashes your little ones against the stones. Now, here he's saying, they're telling the uh, Holy Roman Empire and the people of that empire at this time, their little babies are going to have their heads dashed against the stones, just like the Holy Roman Empire is doing to three nations of Israel in the Great Tribulation. So this is all happening just before the wonderful world tomorrow, but Think about this, God, he, he is really upset when people do such horrifying things like this. And he's, he, is, he is full of wrath because of it. And he says, okay, if you 
take those little babies and bash their brains out, then I'm going, to work, I'm going to see to it that you experience the very same thing. Now, that's the only way apparently those people could learn how horrifying that is. So this is all happening just before the great and wonderful world tomorrow, but uh, this is satanic to the core. Satan is a liar and a murderer from the beginning. He loves to murder people, and especially little babies, because it's so shocking. This is what we're talking about. If you look at the Bible, and if you look at God's view, that's what it, what it is. And then last weekend we had something like a global jihad where tens of thousands of people were praising what Hamas had done, these terrorists had done. Now again, that happened, I'm sure, from both parties and uh, various people. What is God going to think about those people, uh, maybe hundreds of thousands of them, who would be celebrating the death of 40 beheaded Jewish little babies? What does God think about that? We do if we're concerned about the Bible or concerned about what the Bible thinks. And God says, well, He really is going to punish that, the people that do that. What do you think God, if you just look at it spiritually, you, that would surely tell you a lot, but uh, what would God think about people who, let's say, who didn't do that act themselves, but were rejoicing about it. Well, he would uh, certainly, uh, as I understand this, he would uh, certainly hold them guilty as well. Isn't that the way God would look at this spiritually? When you think about His view of all these things, if we're concerned about the Bible and what God has to say, surely uh, we would uh, begin to see this in a different light if we didn't see it this way in the beginning, and which we probably did not. But again, you see, this is, uh, I'm not concerned about the uh, political view, but what, what must God think about this abhorrent act? Little children, little innocent children, and something like that happens. Well, I'm going to talk to you today about babies slaughtered in World War III, and there are numerous verses that tell you they're going to be, because that's the way it is in this world, and they, people take on the mind of a beast in many cases and don't even think like a human being anymore. But what must God think? Shouldn't we be concerned about what God thinks? Let's go back to verse 1 of chapter 137, and we'll get the whole story here. Verse 1 says, By the rivers of Babylon there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Well, oh, here's the problem, they had forgotten Zion, the spiritual Zion, they had forgotten them, and they ended up in the, in the Great Tribulation. And this is a prophecy about God's own church and His own people. That's not a small problem, to be sure. So here this is all explained in our book on the United States and Britain in Prophecy. If you want to look at that and you understand this prophecy really well then. But here God is talking about a modern day Babylon, the daughter of Babylon. This is prophecy that is dual. It was for ancient times, but it's also for today, and it was prophesied in both cases. Who is it, you see, if you think about, okay, they, they, they've forgotten about Zion, well, they, they did know Zion, they did know God, and, and somehow they turned away from God. What happened to those people? Right in this end time you would think they'd be turning to God fervently. But that's not the case, 
And here, here's a sentence I wrote years ago, but this is a strong warning for all of us, not only for those who do this deed, but all of us. What God, God wants to know how we think about such things and whether or not we're going to obey Him. And He says, if you do, then I'll protect your little ones. I will protect your little babies. So you see, these, uh, these were God's own people, and they knew all about the Holy Roman Empire and how it was prophesied and how it was going to uh, inflict this punishment in the uh, Great Tribulation, that they were going to be the key people who uh, inflict this. But as I just mentioned to you before, God says, OK, now you did this to uh, these people, I'm going to do it to you. You, got, you can see that God has strong views on this. And yet, how many people really ask, well, well what's God's view? What is it? Well, I'll tell you, the Bible certainly makes that very clear. It really does, verses 2 and 3. Let's notice that. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they wasted us required of mirth, or joy, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. That's an interesting statement because, well, a song of Zion is really a, a psalm of Zion. Now I'll tell you, this is, brings us into this prophecy, because when we have songbooks that are songs of the Psalms. That they are they're written to be sung. And so we sing them on every uh, Sabbath day, and they're, they're right there in these books. And that's what this prophecy is all about. And those people had these song books in one time, anyhow. And most of them did, and maybe uh, again. Uh, this is something where God says, if you get away from singing these songs of Zion, it just shows you're getting away in other areas, certainly in doctrines of the uh, church. These people are known by some of our people, I'm sure. That's the way the ways these things are, but it, it just shows you when you go through all of this and you talk about what people are doing, human nature is terribly horrible. And Jeremiah 17, verse 9 says, The human mind is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. <laughs> That's human nature. How could people behead little babies and enjoy that and delight in that? And it's so, it's so abhorrent to God and should be to all of us. But something is wrong with our nature. Human nature has to be changed. Changed in, uh, to think like God, and that takes some doing, and, but yet that's God's plan, and He's going to do it. So we, we sing the psalm, psalms, and uh, that's rare on this earth, but that is what they're there for, and should be our, what we sing on our spiritual days, and even in other times for that matter. Uh, but God is going to protect people who do that. So let's take a look at verse 4 now. How shall we sing the eternal song in a strange land? Well, here they are in a strange land, and well, just it doesn't even seem right to be singing. But notice this strange comment, verses 5 and 6, If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. These are the people that are repenting. They're God's own people. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. And if I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy, Psalm 137, verses 5 and 6, they finally are repenting here, 50% of those people. Well, the Psalms are just full of uh, comments about Jerusalem, but why is that? But just think, 
Here these people in, are in the worst time of suffering ever on this planet, the worst ever. And finally, they say in their repentance, If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. He was talking about Jerusalem. You'd think, well, well, is this the way to repent? Oh, yes, it is. It really is. It's all about Jerusalem and everything. Uh, we have a work in Jerusalem, and it all points to New Jerusalem. That's what it's all about. God is going to change everything, and we're about to see Jesus Christ return, and, and it's all going to be following right on the top of these events, right on the heels of them, I guess we could say. But if you can look at Revelation 3 and verse 12, it talks about these Philadelphians in the end time that are obeying God. They have this vision of New Jerusalem. It, it, it's right there in your Bible, Revelation 3 and verse 12, and you, you can read that for yourself. So we have to keep our minds on this, this city who has foundations as Abraham saw and believed, and that was his great vision in life, and it should be ours as well. But why did they end up in Babylon? See, uh, because they stopped singing the songs of Zion, or God's spiritual church. They just stopped doing it. And what a, what a pitiful thing that was. They stopped singing those songs, and look what happened to them in their lives. If you look at the past history, you'll see that Herbert W. Armstrong also had these wonderful songs of Zion, and he originally uh, Establish them. We've been been doing this for all my adult life in in, uh, in the church I have belonged to. Now you see, uh, I have taught, been talking a lot about the Psalms of late, and there really is a, a lot there, and I'll be uh, putting at least uh, part of it in a booklet. And there, we need to understand what these psalms are all about. You can read this one through Psalm 137, only nine verses there. So read it for yourself. Now, God does say, He warns Israel. Notice this, verse 9, O Israel, you have destroyed yourself, but in me is your help. In me is your help. Not in yourself or not in some other nation or anybody, another, another group of people. Verse 16, Samaria shall become desolate, for she has rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword. Their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their women with child shall be ripped up, just ripped apart, because they have a baby that they're about to have, but they are instead, these people just rip them right out of their bellies. Amazing. Here, these are, these are things we don't like to hear about, and yet God has just a lot of verses warning us about them, because this is human nature. It will be done. Once they take captive of people, that's what happens. But what do you, what do you think a pregnant woman is going to think at that time? Now we can, you can see that also in Isaiah 13. That, that one was uh, Hosea 13, verse 9 and 16, but this is Isaiah 13, verse 16, and it says, Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. See, again, he's punishing Israel because of their sins, three nations of Israel. But notice what happens right at the very end. For the Eternal will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Well, how about that? This is all going to lead to, to Jacob and Israel ruling 
over this earth. And it, you can read those verses uh, 2 and 3 where God takes all of those fears away. And that's great news. All of these terrible things that you're seeing in this world today are leading directly into the second coming of Christ. That's the good news here. And God wants us to see that, but He wants to see us to see the uh, horror show before because we're, br we're bringing it on ourselves. Notice this in Nahum, the book of Nahum. You can read this in uh, chapter 3 and verse 3 where they're just stumbling all over corpses. Now they have been taken captive. What are they going to do? What are the enemies going to do to them? Just what God said they would do. Notice this. Verse 10, Yet was she carried away, she went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces and at the top of all the streets. Well, those are terrible things, and I, I don't enjoy talking about them, but I'll tell you this, we need to understand where we, we must be looking so God will protect us. Notice Hebrews 11 and verses 8 through 10. This is what God said of Abraham. Here was his vision. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing where he went, but he just did whatever God said. Verse 9, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Verse 10, For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He's looking for new Jerusalem that's going to be brought down to this earth after everybody has been born into the family of God. God the Father will bring down new Jerusalem, which is going to be the size of half the United States. And he's going to have this beautiful paradise. And Abraham said, Now look, I've looked, I look to that city that has foundations. It's stable. It's more real than this world around you. Far more real. And God wants to give it to us. But we have to learn to overcome our human nature and get rid of it before we can ever do that. We simply can't do anything without uh, overcoming that, that uh, nature that we have. So here you have uh, beasts, really, in this end time, just people with, uh, that, that have uh, developed beast minds. And they don't, some of them don't even think like human beings anymore. And they, 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 they just love to kill little babies and bash their, their heads against stones. What a terrible, terrible thing. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Request Jeremiah and the Greatest Vision in the Bible. The Eternal has chosen Jerusalem, a transcript of this program, and by the waters of Babylon. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of The Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.